you can't get to art school, how do you learn to create the art you want to create? For the last few years, I've been learning how to draw and paint from books, DVDs and online courses. My progress has been slow and I want to speed it up. My aim is to do this by spending more time drawing and painting and by learning to study smarter. Today we're going to look at the training material I'm working with now and then look ahead to what I intend to study next. I'm using this channel to record how my skills develop. The videos will show my progress as I work through the lessons and exercises in the training material. They will be useful for other improving artists. If something works for me, it should work for you. And if something doesn't work, you can learn from my mistakes. There are links to all of the training materials we discuss in the description. So let's get started with the two books, which are the foundations of my current studies. These are Drawing and Painting the Landscape, Creating Textures in Pen and Ink with Watercolour. Drawing and Painting the Landscape by Philip Tyler course of 50 lessons. I bought this after reading a review on Jackson's art blog. I'm a long way through it. I've completed 37 of the 50 lessons and I'm at an exciting bit. I've just started the chapter on painting, which for me involves trying new mediums. So far, there have been lessons on materials, line drawing, perspective, tonal drawing, mark making and composition. I'll flick through the book so you can get a feel for the contents. This isn't a beginner's book. There aren't any step-by-step -step tutorials. Some of the exercises are more like suggestions for experimentation and research. I've enjoyed it and learned a lot. It's informative and has encouraged me to try different things. You can see my progress so far on my blog, which I've also linked in the description. This is the chapter I've just started on painting. Creating textures in pen and ink with watercolour by Claudia Nice. I'm quite a way through this one as well. I've completed the chapters on transparency, metallic surfaces, earth textures, sky and weather and wood grain patterns. I've just started the chapter on trees. I'm looking forward to it and the remaining chapters on florals, still lives, feather and fur. In each of the chapters, Claudia suggests techniques to represent different textures. As an example, here's one of the pages about trees. Again, this is not a beginner's book. Some of the online reviews complain about the lack of detailed instructions, but I found it useful and interesting. The topics are acting as a list of prompts, encouraging me to paint a variety of subjects which I wouldn't have otherwise tried. As well as these books, there are a couple of online courses I'm working with. One of these is free and the other requires a one-off payment. The free one is Drawerbox. Drawerbox is a free course with lots of exercises. The first lesson is about learning to draw confident lines, ellipses, and boxes. On the left hand side are the topics. The boxes lesson is fairly typical. There's a video, plenty of supporting material with diagrams, and it finishes with some exercises. 
The organic perspective exercise is also fairly typical. There's another video, more supporting material, and it finishes with examples of what the homework should look like. I've completed lesson one, and I've just finished the 250 box challenge. This challenge is a precursor to the more complex lessons. The 250 boxes took a lot of time, probably because I'm overthinking it, but I have seen some improvements both in my line quality and my intuitive understanding of perspective. I used the spirit of a couple of the early exercises as a warm up to each drawing and painting session. One of the next videos will be about this warm up. The remaining course I'm working on is Sketching Now Foundations by Liz Steele. I paid for this back in 2016 and have been through it twice, so I've already had my money's worth. A couple of months ago, I realized that I was not drawing from life very much. So I started doing an exercise a week from foundations because each exercise is a drawing from life. The main audience for foundations is the novice sketcher, but it's also useful for the more experienced to recap some fundamentals. The focus is developing observational, compositional and drawing skills. The lessons start off with a few about different ways of visual thinking before moving on to subjects to do with composition. In each lesson there's a lot of material and there's lots of video content. It's not a detailed watercolour course but it provides an interesting way to get started with painting. Liz uses watercolour in an unorthodox way and her attitude of embracing the crazy things that sometimes happen is a good lesson to learn. So what comes next after I finish these courses? I'm thinking of starting The Elements of Drawing by John Ruskin. I have this on Kindle. You can get it for 49 pence, but I'm not sure whether it's the same version I have. The diagrams didn't look very good on a Kindle Oasis, but they are fine on a Kindle Fire. It was published in 1857. In some ways it is old and dated. The tone is authoritarian, but the fundamentals of drawing don't change and it will be fun at least to start it. I may end up choosing between this and Drawerbox, but for a while, at least, I intend to study both of them. I'm going to refer to Daily Painting by Carol Marine as I work through the painting chapter in Drawing and Painting the Landscape. This will be a useful alternative source. Her approaches to Alla Prima painting in Chapter 8 and colour mixing in Chapter 5 look particularly helpful. Carol has great advice about improving by painting small and as often as you can. Watercolour Painting by Tom Hoffman Tom teaches a comprehensive approach to painting in watercolour without forcing his style or any style on you. This is an advanced watercolour course in a book. Liz still recommended it. There are lots of example paintings, most of them by Tom, but also by other artists. Here's an example by John Singer Sargent. Here are a couple of examples by Alvaro Castanet. How to Paint Landscapes Quickly and Beautifully by Nathan Folks. This is another advanced watercolour course. 
As the title suggests, the emphasis is on both quality and speed. Nathan is another advocate of the benefits of painting frequently. One of his core subjects is about simplifying the complexity of the landscape into the simple statement, something you can paint. All of the examples in this book are painted by Nathan. After finishing sketching now foundations, I will continue and retake Liz's edges course. My main motivation is to make sure I keep drawing from life. Edges has a similar format to foundations. It is a follow on course, so not for a complete beginner. It's about making your sketches more compelling by creating a strong focus and sense of depth by understanding the different types of edges in a subject. It's about seeing edges, interpreting them and developing techniques to represent them. I also have a couple of James Gurney's Colour in Practice courses, which I have watched but never followed the exercises. Part one, is about learning to paint by simplifying your use of colour, initially by using just black and white and then moving on to simple limited palettes. Part two, triads, is about painting with just three colours to create pictures with a unified and harmonious atmosphere. It also helps you to become more familiar with the pigments and how they interact. The third part is about creating and using gradients. This is my blog. I've been posting to it since 2011. It contains the results of most of the exercises that I've followed since then. There is an index which shows which blog posts discuss which training material. This is what I have planned so far, but the list may change because I'm creating a syllabus based on a video about finding your art style by Kelsey Rodriguez. This is an interesting video about deciding what sort of art you want to create and then developing the skills to allow you to create it. Kelsey has an interesting channel. It is now primarily about running an art business, but there is some material about learning to create art. That's it. I hope it was useful. Please let me know in the comments if this channel will be helpful and what I can do to make it more helpful.